Hello everybody, welcome to the Kerbal Space Program. My name is Chris and today we're going to be building a concept design. So the concept design that we are building is in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. It is made by a guy known as Ryan Church and originally I thought this design was sort of something random that Ryan decided to make but it turns out that this is known as the ARC-170 Starfighter. This is from Star Wars. And I don't actually remember from which film this was from. So that's why I didn't actually recognize it at first. But yeah, now I fully understand where it's from. And I mean, there were a couple of problems with this design uh, whilst I was you know, trying to figure out how to make it. As you can see, we have a couple cockpits inside the fuselage. That's uh, something that we've never done before, but it gives it a very nice look, eh? Very nice, sharp look. Uh, I quite like that. Uh, obviously, it's uh, it's going to weigh down the plane a little, so that's the disadvantage and be a, an aerodynamic drag at the same time. But uh, you know, it looks good, and you could probably fit more Kerbals inside. But I don't think you'll be able to get Kerbals out of those cockpits. I haven't actually tried it, but you probably won't be able to do it. So yeah, beware about putting Kerbals in there because they may just die <laughs> from starvation since they cannot escape. Okay, and uh, if you have a look on the concept design, you'll see that we have two air intakes, or at least they look like air intakes. Um, this was, I was trying to make, or well, sort of make something similar to that, but uh, obviously we're limited with the amount of parts we have in the game. So this is what I came up with. And it does not look good. It looks a little bit too large with the air intake. And it would kind of weigh down the plane a little. Uh, and if you have a look here, this is the final design with the air intake. And this is uh, a little bit smaller than before. And I think it looks quite good. We don't usually do things like that. So that we've, we've done a couple of different things in this for this design. Oh, and also we have some news for KSP. Really good news, actually. So I read it was like last week or something. The KSP developers announced that they will be implementing part of a mod. And the mod is the Space Plane Plus mod made by Porkjet. I actually reviewed that mod, or maybe not really reviewed, but I just played it just for the fun of it. Uh, probably, when did I do like a month ago or something? I didn't expect it to get, uh, to get noticed as much as it did. So, uh, yeah, I'm really happy. It's a really good mod, actually. Of course, there were a couple of problems with the mod when it comes to uh, the Kerbals because you're unable to get the Kerbals out of a cockpit. So I guess that's going to be fixed if that particular cockpit gets implemented into KSP stock. But what I really like about the mod is how it already flows with the current stock parts that we have. So the fuselages have a cockpit that fits them perfectly. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to doing that. And also, I'm, I'm wondering if those air intakes are gonna get implemented too. We've got some really nice looking air intakes. Uh, they're, they're slim but long. So they're different from what the ones we have in game at the moment. Uh, I didn't exactly plan what, to, what else to talk about for this episode, sort of like a random thing I'm doing. Uh, but anyway, we'll talk about the, the curb paint mod, as you can see, that's what we are using and we're at the moment, painting this plane black, sort of a blackish color, and then I change it to a blackish gray, and then I changed it to a red, and uh, I kept on changing it. Uh, the reason why I didn't really like the, the black color is because we used uh, the black color in a design called Vance. Like, I don't know how long ago that was, but I didn't want to make it look exactly the same. But at the same time, this design has to look similar to the concept design, so. Yeah, I think it's good that I changed to a red and grayish color, as you can see there. It looks a little bit more realistic, or at least more similar to that concept design. At the moment, it looks looks quite quite impressive, actually. Yeah, and uh, when I launched this thing initially, I forgot to put the Kerbals inside those extra cockpits, so I didn't actually get to test out whether or not uh, the, the reaction wheels work. Because this is my question. If I have no Kerbals within those four cockpits, do the reaction wheels work? Because inside these cockpits you have reaction wheels. So I'm wondering if they work or not. Uh, do you have to have Kerbals inside? Yes, no, maybe. You guys tell me. Um, a problem with this design 
is well earlier on was that it kept on swaying side to side as you, as you could tell and I, I had I didn't really have too much of a problem other than that uh, you get up off the runway quite early and uh, the Kerbals look happy of course <laughs> uh, there was well, one minor problem with the fuel unfortunately the fuel wasn't really connected properly uh, there are some parts in the game that uh, that don't pass fuel through them which is which means that the actual engines won't be receiving all the fuel that they could be receiving so I had to fix that with the uh, the fuel ducts that was that was an easy thing to solve and if you're interested in using this design uh, I did use the action groups so if you press number one on your keyboard that will activate one of the turbojet engines and then you have number two which activates the other two turbojet engines and then finally number three which is for the two atomic rocket motors and as you can tell we are in space and we have over half a fuel tank worth of fuel left and when I mean fuel tank I mean like overall fuel so yeah look at that very nice I didn't actually expect it to do so well initially uh, since I haven't actually played well, I haven't actually made a, a design like this for quite a while so yeah, there we go. And all of a sudden, it started spazzing out. I think I was time warping. Yeah, I was time warping. And all of a sudden, it just straightened itself out. As soon as we get into the thicker part of the atmosphere, I didn't expect that part. Uh, good thing we didn't need any parachutes. <laughs> I thought we would have, but no, no parachutes needed. And even with the fuel off, uh, the throttle all the way down, uh, there seems to be a visual glitch uh, with the atomic rocket motors, as you can see. Uh, the engines are actually off, but I still get the the thrust. It looks like there is thrust output there. So yeah, that just it's a little tricky. That's happened quite a couple of times to me in game. Uh, so yeah, that's something else. That's something else that might get fixed. And as you can see, that we have quite a lot of fuel remaining. Quite a lot of fuel. This could get to the moon. Uh, I do suspect it could land on the moon. But I'm not too sure about returning back to Kerbin, so you're going to have to figure that out for yourselves. Uh, but in the end, if you, if you have a look now, I did, I removed like 40% of the remaining fuel. And as you can tell, I'm able to move, move this plane uh, quite easily now. So again, I do hope you guys enjoyed and see you next time. Take care. Bye.